Hello, Joshua Yale here, and I just saw The Marvels, and the mid credit scene for The Marvels gives Marvel fans like us what we've long waited for, but probably not in the way we were expecting. The stinger shows Monica Rambeau waking up in the Fox X-Men universe, where she's greeted by Binary, who just happens to be Mama Maria Rambeau in this universe, and Beast is also there, voiced by Kelsey Grammer, reprising his role from X-Men The Last Stand and X-Men Days of the future past. This scene tells us far more than it appears at first glance, so let's dig into everything it reveals about what's coming for the X-Men in the MCU. Hello? Monica. Hello? Fury, was that Monica? I'm Carol? I don't want to talk to her like this. So the first question this scene raises is, which version of the X-Men universe is this? Because there are a lot of them. There's the original X-Men universe, the first class universe that takes place in the past featuring younger actors. Another mutant already here. The X-Men Origins Wolverine universe that's also in the past, but kind of different. The Days of Future Past universe in a post-apocalyptic future and the Logan universe, which is set in a bleak, not so distant future. Then there's the Deadpool movies, which seem to take place in present day, but feature the younger first class X-Men actors. And let's not forget about Earth 838, where Wanda Maximoff murdered Professor X, along with the rest of the Illuminati. So, as you can tell, the X-Men movie continuity has become so tangled over the years that it's hard to keep it straight, but there are some clues as to where exactly Monica wound up. So, we not only see Beast in the lab where Monica wakes up, but we hear him mention that Charles asked for an update, of course referring to Professor X. Given that Beast and Professor X are both alive and working in the X-Mansion, plus the fact that Grammar is back as Beast, it's a pretty clear indicator that we are in the original X-Men universe. More specifically, we're most likely in the reset timeline of the original X-Men universe that Wolverine created at the end of Days of Future Past, where certain traumatic events never happen and the X-Men are all together in the X-Mansion, working together to raise and teach the next generation of mutants. It's good to see you, Charles. It's good to see everyone. Remember that when Wolverine woke up and explored the mansion in this happy ending universe, Beast appears for a moment to chide Logan for sleeping in. Good morning, Logan. Light start. And then Logan meets with Professor X in his office. Welcome back. We are still many years away before the events of Logan or any other hellish future where mutants are all but extinct. And as if to underline the fact that this is that same universe, the Days of Future Past theme is played at the end of the mid credit scene. This means that all the other X-Men who have been killed off are still around, namely Jean Grey and Scott Summers. Easy, pal. Some things never change. So now I want to look at this scene from the perspective of the comic books. Binary does have an association with the X-Men in the comics, but it seems like she was mostly there because the writers wanted to throw a curveball at Monica when she woke up and demonstrate that she's in another universe. And what better way to do that than have her mother Maria, alive and well, dressed up as an unfamiliar superhero. In the comics, Binary is not a mutant, but another alias of Carol Danvers when she goes binary and it's like all oh, super fiery energy form. It's crazy. Aside from Maria being there to do a number on Monica, Binary shows us that this universe now has other active superheroes outside of the X-Men. Beast says it was Binary that found Monica, so it's likely that Maria is a space-faring superhero in this universe and knew to contact esteemed scientist Dr. Hank McCoy after finding Monica drifting unconscious in the cosmos. You realize the level of impact this will have on the mutant community? Yes, I do. While I'm sure the filmmakers had their reasons for stranding Monica in the X-Verse, it seemingly would have been more fitting for Miss Marvel to wind up in the X-Men universe instead. After all, Kamala Khan has a mutation. Kamala, there's something different, like a mutation. And she's clearly on the path to becoming an X-Men member in the MCU, just like she did recently in the comics. Being among established X-Men could help Kamala learn more about her mutation and the nature of her powers. Plus, she could learn about how the world has mistreated mutant kind in this universe, which would prepare her for the hardships to come once the X-Men join the MCU in earnest. On the other hand, I gotta give credit where credit is due, Beast was the perfect choice for this scene, and not just because he's a scientist who can explain why someone disappeared from another universe. In the comics, Beast was a long-running member of the Avengers, and he has deep ties to their lore. 
He acted as a liaison between the X-Men and the Avengers. He became best friends with longtime Avenger Wonder Man, and he joined the covert squad of a secret Avengers. So it's nice to see that Beast was chosen to make first contact with the MCU, home of the Avengers. Heads did it for me. Tails, you did it for me. I'm not even gonna look because you did it for me. Well, now that Monica has been recovered by the X-Men, what happens next? My best guess is that this scene is a setup for Deadpool 3, which as of this writing is the next MCU movie. The film will see Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool crossover with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine properly this time. This Marvel's mid credit scene actually helps establish the setting for that movie and potentially addresses a much debated issue, which is we all saw Wolverine die at the end of Logan, so how can he show up in this threequel? Well, if Deadpool 3 picks up where this scene left off, then we know the story takes place just after Days of Future Past when Wolverine is very much alive. We're assuming that Deadpool and perhaps some of the X-Men will make their way to the MCU over the course of the movie, so it could be that Monica is the one who helps them travel from one universe to another. And Binary appears to be wearing a set of quantum bands, which we know have the power to open a breach between universes, so with Monica's guidance, they could travel back to the MCU. How about that? We're a team. Oh, no, 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 we're not a team. We're not a team. <sighs> And that is all we learned from the Marvel's mid credit scene. Let us know your favorite theory in the comments. And for more Marvel, keep it locked on IGN.